Rich here on behalf of Rich TV Live with our very special guest. Here with Seti Coscarella, the CEO of Tat Lifestyle and Wellness. How are you doing today? Awesome. So it's excited. Been a busy week, but... It's been a busy year already, right? <laughs> it's uh, crazy. So this is the first time we're getting a chance to meet face-to-face -face in 2021. Mm -hmm. So many things have happened already. Let's just talk about some of the things that have just transpired over the last little bit. Sure. So first and foremost, you guys are now selling product. Yep. Congratulations. Thank you. The last time we talked, you weren't selling yet. We were almost there. That's right. And we now you're selling. Person. Yep. You're in Ohio yep. and you're getting sales. How does that feel? It feels awesome. Right? I mean, it, you spend the first little bit. And look, I think we got a product from uh, the conceptual to market in record time. I mean, if you take a look at any tobacco company, when they kind of conceive making a new cigarette, and making a new cigarette in the tobacco industry is putting a different wrapper on it. You're not really going through the product development that we're going through. And and it typically takes them about a year to kind of go through that process and actually launch it into market. We came with a new product uh, in a new category with a new value proposition for consumers in the middle of a pandemic, uh, launched it just before Christmas. So we also had Christmas and New Year's. And over the course of six weeks, we're in well over 100 stores. Unbelievable. And for the stores that have carried it for more than three weeks, about 60% of them uh, have already reordered. That's so, crazy. I mean, that is astounding results, which kind of helps. Well, I mean, it gives the company a lot of confidence, uh, sort of validation in you know, delivering this product. So I think we've kind of graduated from being an interesting story to now being a very interesting product. And um, for consumers, the fact that, you know, even when we talk to a lot of the retailers, they're starting to get repeat consumers that are coming in, which is exactly what you want. So. You know, you, you want to be able to take smokers that they go out and buy the product and then they come back and ask for it again and, and want to buy it again. And I think uh, we've been able to start demonstrating that. So as we continue to grow and add more and more stores, I think that uh, Tad's got a real bright future ahead of it based on all the, everything that we've seen this, uh, thus far. I agree with you. Now, you guys also had some huge news, a deal with Crossmark. Yeah. The same company that worked with Jewel and helped Jewel become over a billion dollar company. So forty billion dollar company. Forty billion dollar company. So that is a massive, massive deal, a massive partnership. Yeah. Potentially over a hundred thousand convenience stores and gas stations throughout America. What does this mean for Tat Lifestyle? Uh, listen, I think it's a, a transformational partnership that we were able to sort of get across the finish line with them. Now I mean they currently service over 100,000 convenience stores. But as we start working with them, we're gonna expand that coverage. So we wanna cover as many of the convenience stores as we can through this partnership. Now, you know, I've been starting to do a little bit of this back of the envelope math. And I kind of, because I've had some people ask me like, okay, what does it look like? You know, what's TAT's potential? Like, well, why don't I tell you what TAT looks like if it doesn't work, okay? So 100,000 stores, and it's not, they're already there. They're selling products that anybody would know because they work with, some of the biggest brands in the world, they're already servicing these convenience stores on a regular basis. So to get the product onto those shelves is literally just a matter of time uh, and effort. But now, let's suppose we get into those convenience stores. You're in 100,000 convenience stores. Each one of those convenience stores, because the minimum order a convenience store can do is a carton. I mean, the wholesaler won't sell less than a carton. So you're gonna buy a carton of each. Well, if each of those stores buys a carton of each once a year, and you kind of factor in that the wholesalers also have to keep at least a little bit to replenish in case they sell through. You're looking at $20, 25000000 million a year. Not bad. That's assuming that you do worst case scenario. Yeah, my worst case scenario is that these stores sell through a carton of each a year. Wow. Not That's bad. 30 packs of cigarettes. That would be incredible. It's funny. So, That's worst case scenario. Yeah, I mean, what, really, would, what would the average customer order would it be a thousand dollars on on average because i was trying to do some quick math myself mm -hmm. and i think the numbers came out to if if you got if you grew to a hundred thousand locations eventually and each location ordered a thousand dollars of product i think the revenue was in the number of about 180 million yeah that's all right that would be a nice goal well i mean that would so if each store is ordering about a thousand dollars of product a year they're selling less than a couple of cartons a month. That's right. So that's very realistic. Then. It's nothing. So I mean, that most, number most is stores, realistic. Once you start kind of getting uh, some traction with consumers, 
it, you know, leading brands will sell into the tens of cartons a week. We're, we're you know, the math I kind of laid out is a carton a year. Yeah, one carton a year was twenty million. So it's, it's <laughs> I do mean, the math. It's yeah, I mean, next that you're doing two hundred million, right? right? And I mean, like that's really what the industry kind of looks like. I mean, when when you start looking and, and saying numbers like, okay, the industry is a hundred billion dollars in the U.S. or almost a trillion dollars globally. Sometimes people, like, it's just hard to wrap your mind around how big that number is, right? And I was even talking to somebody earlier today, and they're like, well, how big is this addressable market? And I said, look, you know, you end up, you got 200 smokers. One out of those 200 smokers likes it, 199 don't like it, okay? Based on how big, you know, the size of the market in terms of what the sales are every year, it's $500 million a year yeah. for 199 smokers to not like it. Okay, it's good, massive. What, I'm half right? What, one out of 400 smokers? Still a quarter billion dollars a year. No, you know what? I've already seen people personally, I've tried it, and, and I actually was really impressed. Yeah. Everyone that I've seen that has tried it has really been impressed. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's going to be something where, oh, there's a lot of people that don't like it. I think the question is, how many people are going to like it? How many people are going to love the price point? The price point is huge. Yeah. The fact that you guys are like undercutting the entire market to mm -hmm. me is a game changer for sales, right? And distribution. Well, I mean, that's that's really. It's all about price point. Like people, when they want to buy a product, they're always like, "What's the cheapest product?" I mean, that's usually the way it works. Mm -hmm. Then they're going to try it. If they like it, they're going to come back, right? Exactly. That's that's very smart. In the beginning, in the, in the beginning, it's an exercise in trial. I mean, you want to try to get a pack in as many smokers' hands as possible. That's right. And they'll try it, and if they like it, then they'll go out and buy it. And again, I mean, you need fractional share to do extraordinary numbers. And I mean, in terms of the global opportunity, the U.S. is only three and a half percent of the worldwide smokers. That's right. So we're only thinking about the like, U.S. And you guys are just only in Ohio right now. So. Yeah. So I mean, like, we're at the beginning of the beginning of the beginning. And you know, I, I saw this other company, RLX. So it's yes. a vape company, Relax. Uh, IPO, I think, in the New York uh, about. Two weeks ago, I was doing 300 million in sales. They started in 2017. I mean, they're growing at a good clip. Um, they've been holding a valuation of 40 billion dollars. Wow. So, I mean, if you do a price to sales on that, they're, they're trading consistently at 150 times sales. Wow. So, you know, I'm going to take a look at the worst case scenario that I painted, and I'm not saying you're going to apply a same sales multiple, but if you did. Okay. Yeah, you guys it's, are in a good place. It's a little different than where we are now. Oh, definitely. I mean, this has been an incredible story going from June of 2020 to where we are in 2021. And I was just thinking about that and I was talking to our community about the fact that I don't know if I've ever seen another business in my life, actually, that I can think of go from an idea mm -hmm. to a product mm -hmm. to sales mm -hmm. to national distribution in eight months. I don't think I can think of one. You guys are the only ones I could think of, and it's literally happening right before our eyes. So now, on top of that, on top of your Crossmark deal, uh, you guys just got featured in Forbes magazine. Congratulations. Thank you. So that's like one of the biggest magazines in America as well. So now you're starting to get national exposure. Mm -hmm. How does that feel? Uh, it's almost surreal, right? I, mean, uh, I didn't start here thinking that I was going to get covered in Forbes in uh, six months, but I guess uh, obviously thankful and grateful for that. And what I think it also does is it kind of gives a lot of other national publications the confidence to know that this is a story people want to read about. Like if I took a look at that Forbes article, I think we had well over 4,000 reads of it in 24 hours or so. That's great. Which is pretty good for you know a new company in a new industry. Um, and again, I think when you look at the media landscape, a lot of them are looking for stories that will help drive viewers of you know, people that want to read the things that they're covering. And I think we've been able to demonstrate that we're a story that people care about. So I'm hopeful that you know that's kind of just the beginning of some of the national media coverage that we'll, we'll sort of go out and try to get. What do you think is going to be the biggest obstacle you're going to have to deal with? Because Growing to a hundred thousand locations, you're going to need massive distribution, massive warehousing. Is that something? Like, no. are you guys in a position to be able to manage all of that right now? 
Well, you it's not, to scale? Well, the thing is, I mean, the, the beauty about this particular product is that you're going to leverage the existing infrastructure. So I don't need the warehousing and the distribution because distributors already exist that service convenience stores. Great. Doing a deal with a company like Crossmark where they already have the relationship with these national distributors and all the sub-distributors and everybody across the U.S., it's basically a plug-and-play model, right? Like, they were able, you know, again, when they work with some of the other companies, uh, like one of those maybe companies, <laughs> they were able to really help them scale very, very quickly because they already had the pre-existing infrastructure in place. And you work with them hand in hand to get that product into the market. And then what we can do is start focusing a lot on the marketing side of the business so that we can communi communicate the value proposition to our target audience. And they'll go in and start buying it. They're the ones that help us make sure that when they go into a store, it's waiting there for them to buy. And I think, I mean, I couldn't ask for uh, a better partner for our business at this stage because they don't take anybody that comes along. Like they're very, very selective in terms of the brands that uh, they want to represent. And I think we're sort of fortunate to have found each other because they think that this opportunity is immense. They think that, you know, given their experience in the space, they think that a lot of consumers are going to find this very appealing. And, you know, that there's a, a real tangible opportunity and, and that's why they want to sink their teeth into it. Because they deal with some of the biggest brands in the world. And the fact that we're not one of the biggest brands in the world yet, um, <laughs> and they were that excited to bring us on, I think is, is just a real testament to the potential this product has. And doing deals like that are what help us realize that potential. Because now we can actually turn it into something real. If there was one thing you would want investors that are watching this from all over the world, we got investors in Canada, the United States, Germany, specifically those three markets mm -hmm. that love TAT. Yeah. I'm getting messages, I know you're getting messages every day from those three markets. People love TAT. We're getting messages from people outside of those markets wanting TATs, buying the stock. They just love this this company. What would the message be to the people that are watching at home? I think, you know, when you kind of take a look at a lot of these um, disruptive companies, right? They, and again, it's not like I like to compare them to Tesla or, or Beyond Meat or these sorts of things. But at the end of the day, they all started somewhere, just like we started. Now, you look at what they were able to achieve. Like Tesla is worth more than, I think, every automaker combined. Yeah. Now, Tesla doesn't make nearly the number of vehicles that every automaker makes. They don't make the revenue that every automaker uh, maker makes. They're not close when you kind of look at it from a direct comparison. I'm not saying that we should be worth more than every tobacco company in existence, but I think you know when investors are looking at these sorts of opportunities, you can kind of look at it and say, you know, thematically does it make sense? Is there an addressable market here? And do I think that you have a product that's actually going to be able to, to resonate with this market? I think we do. Um, we've been able to give it to now to a lot of consumers and we've seen a bunch of reviews online. They like it too. They do. I mean, you've given it to people who smoke. I've given it to a ton of people who smoke. And I really haven't had anybody that comes back and says, eh, I don't like it. So, you know, when you kind of start building your math around one out of 200 people need to like it, I think we've got a lot more than one out of 200 people that like it. I think so too. I think the math works really, really well. Yeah. So, I mean, I think the math starts to become quite interesting in terms of you know, are people actually going to like this product? So, given that we've literally just launched in stores, uh, we've sort of had a, our first sale place to fulfill, and now we're starting to expand on those opportunities. I think the proof of concept, like we're past that point now, and now we're into you know aggressive growth mode. So, you know, given you know, the expertise and experience that we have. I think we'll be able to execute, and we're going to be growing our team now and, and getting out to market as quickly as possible. Because I think there's a lot of smokers that would honestly give this a great shot. So, over the next, or over the coming months, I think investors and, and fans of the company will start to see a lot of really interesting developments, and and a lot of things that I think will continue to give uh, confidence to the market that we have a product and a company that's going to succeed.
That's great. Super excited to see how this story continues to unfold from a story to a product that's now being sold that's gone from Ohio, that's going to go across America, and then eventually, potentially all over the world. Super exciting to see this evolve and see you evolve as the CEO and grow with the companies. It's an amazing story and I know our community loves it. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you guys for watching. If you're not winning, you're not watching. We bring you the winners, we bring them to you first. If you like this video, smash the like button, comment down below, share this video everywhere and subscribe. Remember, Rich TV Live is strictly for education and entertainment purposes. Always do your due diligence, always do your research before you invest in anything that we talk about here at Rich TV Live. Chances are if you speak to your financial advisor and you say, hey, what do you think about TAT? They're going to say it's a great pick. Rich, find that pick. And then you can say for my boy Rich, thank you, Sadie, for joining us. Thanks, Rich. Thank you for watching, guys. Have a nice day, everybody.